Where did this idea come from? Two and a half years ago, having yet another MRI scan, you know it's that jin, 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 jin. But I'd asked them to play Bach cello suites. So he had this jum, 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 jum noise. And then the quiet would come in and the beautiful Yo-Yo Ma playing, coming over the top, this wonderful lyrical music. And then in would come again the jum, jum, jum. I could actually see dancers sort of moving to these really sort of disparate sounds and almost sort of murmuring together and then breaking apart, shattering almost, and then coming back together. Really feeling this sort of movement and murmuring to these really disparate images. But also it's about wanting to develop my artistic practice into something which was much more than just making big inert statues. Why don't I use dynamic modelling material? Why don't I use a group of dancers and stimulate them to move in different ways by presenting them with headphones, soundscapes to listen to? I knew I wanted two dance facilitators and so I brought in Rosaria and Maria. I'm very interested in kind of in the responsive creative process. So what is dance for us is also a moment to not question here but to maybe question doing what is music for us like this sound <laughs> yeah <laughs> which could be noise for us but how you react to it it's still okay i knew because of their skills that they would bring those participants who may not have danced before and bring them on a journey to a final performance so i mean these tasks that we are going to be doing now, they are really simple. They are very much into getting to the movement. They were each doing their different part of the facilitation and it was all carefully yeah, thought yeah, through. The, the process really fitted well, I think, with the use of soundscapes, how they were introduced. Yeah. Yeah. So the connections between the sound and the movement was purposeful, gradual, but at the right pace and at the right time. The idea of guest artists came in and I thought immediately of Helen Goodwin because I knew that she'd make this beautiful space of Fabrica where we'd be doing the movement. She would provide a space where our participants could experiment creatively with more sculptural materials. Once the dance and the movements have, been, have taken place and the participants have listened to the sound, it's to say to them they can interpret that reinterpret that through mark making. So along with Helen, I immediately thought of Olga as another guest artist. It was to be my, my role to accompany the whole journey uh, with my camera. Olga brings that sort of critical artistic eye, just being able to watch individual participants developing, but also the shapes, and she could really see that. And it's a different view if you're looking at it through, through Zoom. Well, I'm really excited to collaborate and meet the other participants and um, so I'm grateful yes for this opportunity to kind of shift maybe my relationship with dance. I'm hoping that it's going to be a wonderfully exploratory experience for me with other people in conjunction with the sound. The sound for me is going to be really important because I don't see so well and also the artwork, the artwork we might, I might achieve. My closest creative connection was with the, the soundscapes. Having a studio in the middle of the Nep estate, you know, for its rewilding and growing biodiversity. At the end of a studio day, I'm going out walking, I'm going out listening and hearing things like the nightingales. I suppose increasingly I started to think more about sound. I suppose it's just taking a bit of time to actually start to emerge and realise actually I'm not just a sculptor, I don't just do statues, I'm interested in other things and for me sound has become particularly important. My contribution was really the sort of the field recordings and I needed somebody to work with that could take these recordings and do something with them which is where you came in Ian. So I ended up doing use of drawings. Mm -hmm. I think 
overriding this, this idea of sort of hope that actually recordings here reflect the sort of story of hope that Netwild and provides. I wanted to bring that story of hope to an urban space and share it and just see what people people make of it. So actually that was the first one, um, hope. And then I'd mentioned MRI and Nightingales. The life is a sculpture. The more I would listen to myself in the studio, I'd recognise that actually I do make a lot of noise. This is my I had to think about what might work in terms of quantity of soundscape, what would work so with a workshop. With... And by that time, we'd realised we'd be dividing the group so into the... two. And so six soundscapes, 10 minutes each, seemed to work. We ended up with three for each group. I already knew that the headphones would be part of it. I was fascinated by the idea that people could choose, whether you could see a difference between dancers on different tracks. And I knew they had to be obviously LED headphones with different colours so that I could sort of be watching and thinking, ah, oh, they're, they're doing very different movements, but they're on also on different tracks, or they're doing similar movements despite being on different tracks. They didn't have the headphones on much until the final day. And they built up the trust, they built up the techniques and the confidence. So that by the time they got to the stage of putting their headphones on, they weren't completely thrown. And initially, yes, they were sort of more responding immediately to what was in the headphones and not looking at the other people in the room. But by the time we got to the Thursday afternoon, they, were, they were amazingly were able to both listen to the soundscapes, respond to that and still connect so with the the person next to them and the way they worked together in sort of trios, everything was improvised. So watching them was fascinating and, and get a sense of them both connecting with sounds and with each other. I've really enjoyed the soundscapes because they are the main stimulus. Without the soundscapes, we couldn't do any of it. With the sounds of nature. I found myself almost becoming an animal, a bird, an insect. But when I hear music, I want to dance, I want to move. When I see art, I'm often inspired to move. So as soon as that sound comes to mind or comes into my ear, into my brain, there's a whole landscape. I'm, I'm transported to another world. And I can see now the performance. And I have confidence in you, in trusting your own instincts and really getting that movement from the, from the heart. But I think today they were able to go much deeper through the sound and then at the same time allowing the sound to come into them to produce movements, like so much discovery that uh, I'm not sure they can put it into words and neither can I. I think that everybody is trying to find out uh, what it means to them and we can see that in how the different sessions have developed. There are so many different abilities and so many different experiences in the room that that translates as well about how the groups are communicating with each other. And I think that that has also an impact on their own understanding of the concept and um, how it's going to materialize in the performance, I think. This is for me marking moving into a more collaborative, multidisciplinary approach for my art. It's about sound, it's about movement, it's about who can dance, how you should move. So let's experience it.
Dance and movement is for all of us, and it and the stories our bodies have to tell are fascinating, and we can be up there. My, my question is for the participants specifically: What was the largest component that provided that sense of safety and trust and comfort for you to move so freely, and how much? did the soundscape provide an atmosphere for you to explore? We didn't get the, the, the music really till after that. And then we really made that connection as a group. And then with the music, then it was about have, keeping that connection, even though we might be listening to two different pieces of music. And in terms of the freedom, that's what the soundscape brought us, I think. With, uh, there was a, a chance to kind of break away sometimes. Um, yeah. Well, I felt I was sort of given a freedom to express myself in a way that I, I hoped I might, I suppose I'd like to say. I just want to say thank you on behalf of all of us, yes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you were just amazing. This is my journey, 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 it sort of came to me that I was going to be a portrait sculptor. This is my journey. One, two, this, this is my journey. One, two, two, this, this is my journey. One, one, two, three. This, this is my journey. One, 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 one.